eyes down for the other one. She's floating. She's floating on two pieces of scaffold tube and two hydraulic platforms, which leaves me free underneath to slide the box sections in, drop them, get them centered up, drop them down, and uh, and mark them, which is exactly what I wanted, because measuring between them is just too, <laughs> just too inaccurate. You've got to mark through the holes, otherwise you're just not doing it at all. Right, here we go. That's it folks, they're positioned. So now I can uh, lower the hydraulic platforms, check the positioning and uh, mark the holes through the feet so that we know they're going to be in exactly the right position. Not only am I going to do it with a, uh, with a felt marker, it looks like the holes in the feet are 3 eighths of an inch so I shall just use a transfer punch as well to get a dead centre. And then I'm going to drill, and I'm, because that's 4mm box section, I'm going to drill them and tap them. Uh, and I'm also going to put some holes in these ends, centre of those areas, so that I can bolt a piece across and lift on it. And the same at the other end. So I can bolt a piece across and lift on it, right? And also in this side. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the platforms out and then I'm going to suss out where the uprights go here and I'm going to drill some holes in the side and tap them as well. So I can do all the drilling on a drilling machine rather than sweating with a a drill afterwards to uh, to try and drill holes with bloody power drills and battery drills and crap like that. Okay, off we go. It's looking good. There she is, up in the air, and it's not it's not much. It's two inch higher. It's fifty mil. But what a difference, what a difference that makes. What a difference that makes to my back. <laughs> it really does. That puts the, that puts that hand wheel right at the extension of my arm. So that is, that's a good height. Uh, let's have a look at the Colchester. Yeah. See, I can't reach that. That's lower. That's lower. What about the Covmac? Just reach off. Yeah, that's substantially lower. Substantially lower. It's uh, it makes a difference, folks. When you are standing at a machine, even if you're standing at a machine for half or three quarters of an hour, right, and you're stooped over it, when you get to my age, your back hurts. But there you go, that is, that is fabulous, that's lovely working height. Right, that's not what it's about. That's not what it's about. So let's get this uh, marked up and punched. And, uh, and then next we'll start to build, we'll start to build this stand at the back here. And uh, I'll continue doing that. And when I've got it drilled and tapped, I'll drill it marked into the side, I can then drill it and tap it and we'll take these two out and we'll do all the drilling and tapping at one go and then put it back in and it's ready to go okay two problems first problem the holes that I thought were clear through were actually bunged up solid with paint and detritus and all the muck that's been getting in there since 1933 because it hasn't been bolted down second thing is when you put the uh, you see that there when you put the transfer punch in to punch through it you can't hit the top of it because it's too tall so I'm just going to see what I've got in the way of uh, 7 sixteenths drills or punches that I can shorten make a little short make a, a very short 
punch that I can put a piece of bar on and tap down. I don't even think I can, I don't know if I can reach through there with a felt pen even. I might be able to. Yes, I can to an extent and I'll get a centre because it's actually going and marking build it. I might be able to mark a bit more by doing that. But I want I want a definite punch mark to drill to. Right, on wood. And there it is folks, the very short centre punch. That I should pop down the holes, give a sharp tap and hope and pray that it marks it. I'm going to do it with a felt pen as well, just in case. But uh, I'm hoping that we're going to get a nice round felt pen mark with a little dot in the middle of it, and then we're away. Right, off I go. And there you go, folks. Little centre punch marks right in the middle, and nice black felt writer marks from the outside. We should be able to see those okay. Right, that's that done. That's that done. So next job is to set up the uh, the back box section piece, put it up against the uh, back slider there, the back rail if you like, and then mark that up so we can drill some fixing holes, probably just a couple of fixing holes, for the upright in the side of the rear box section. Right, I'll get this rigged up. And I'll bring you back, he said, crawling up off his knees. Side project. I've got a lot of sewing to do. And this damper's not ever worked properly. And so I took the uh, top off the lid. And the plate that was on it, I've, luckily I had, a spare, I had a spare damper. But the plate that was on it, which I've now put back on this one was damaged there, the screw had pushed it right down and bent it, well I flattened it out and put it back on that one but I've put the, uh, the best plate on here so I'm just going to put this back together now the idea of this screw is that the screw lifts the plate and varies the damping so I'm going to see if it's any better what happens is because of the angle of the saw blade, as the saw blade cuts, the action of the saw blade also lifts the damper. So that on the back stroke, as the blade's going backwards, it's supported by the oil. And it takes the cutting weight off the blade on the back stroke. So this wasn't working. And I have read as well that you have to put thick oil in here. Well, it's got engine oil in it at the moment. It might not be thick enough. But I'm going to put this back together and see if it works. See if I can get that bloody circlet back on, which is going to be a pain. If you're going to take this, this, this arm off, here's a piece of advice. If you're going to take this arm off, take the inner circlet out, not the outer one, because the rod will not go past there. So you can't get it out. You, you have to take the inner circle out, not the outer one. Right, I'll put this back together and we'll see if it works. Folks, look at this. Much better. A slowly descending arm. That is something you've got to be careful of as well. Right, I get this saw set up and I'll start cutting these ends off. I've given up trying to grind them off. I don't need that that extra bit of length. If I do, I'll weld another piece on, but I don't think I will do. Will do. Right, I'll just better wipe this oil up off the floor as well. As usual, I've made a mess. What a wicked boy. Bye now. Working perfectly. You can tell by the noise it makes, it's lifted on the back strip. There you go. I will have to get around to putting that starter on as well. It's sitting there waiting patiently. The 
could probably do with a new blade in it now because I've been using the uh, the old blade without any damping. There she goes. Excellent. And there we are folks. Home time. I've been sidetracked of course. But that's it. Now the tedious job which I have started on a little bit. Cleaning up all the box section ready for welding. I'm not sure where that centre support's going to go yet. Uh, well I am. I know where it's going to go. It's going to go at the level. It's going to go at the level of the T-slot. So there'll be two pieces come out from the T-slot and there'll be a reinforcing piece across the middle. So that's what we've got done for today. It's coming along really well. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Morning folks. Day two. Tuesday. And the first job is to get this box section de-rusted and then weld up the bottom piece with a closing plate over the bottom and I think a hole drilled in each box section a piece of tube welded in and then get it in position and mark it on the back box section and then we're ready to take these two out and drill them uh, with a few other considerations but I think that's I think that's the way forward but the first job is the despicable de-rusting so off we go. An hour later folks, one down, one to go. Let's crack on with it. The last side. Thank the Lord for that. I've been masked up and grinding away since I got here at 11 o'clock. What a bloody job. Never mind, it's nearly done. Bye now. Two o'clock. It's done. All nice and bright, ready for welding. So I'm going to do one end, weld that up, put a closing plate underneath and put two holes in the uh, in the boxes to weld the tube through to bolt into the uh, box section there. So I'll crack on with that. I might film a bit of that while I'm doing it. Just cutting the spaces with my new working damper. Can you hear it's lifting it off on the back stroke? The rapid door is mended. Right folks, that's those drilled and the tubes cut and inserted. I'm just going to put a couple of tacks on there. A couple of tacks up here, just to hold them in position. And then we're ready to start assembly. Off we go. Here's the setup on the ever useful hydraulic platform with sash cramps, which are ever useful. And we're ready just to tack that in place now. I'm not going to tack that one in, but I'm going to tack the top one in just with a couple of tacks just to hold it all jannock. Because that will probably be going further down than that, but I don't know quite where yet until I get set up to put the two legs on, which is the next job after I've taken the all the channels out and drilled them. But the first thing to do is get them marked for all the holes so I can drill them all at once, put them back in, bolt them up, and that's the job done. I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for a fairly fine thread and I've decided on that which is 3H UNF oh no sorry 7 16 UNF 20 right which gets lots of threads inside the box section right very strong thread be absolutely fine for this job 
right? And if it strips out, I shall just do something else. But I doubt very much it will. Right, onward. Let's get cracking. However, I think I need another cup of tea. And there she is, folks. G clamped in place. Not actually vertical at the moment. It's, as you can see, it's leaning in quite a, a lot. But when you... Uh, It easily comes up vertical to there and stops dead when it touches the floor, so that's bang on now. So that's where it's going to go. In that plane, but I have to now align it to get the pulley alignment correct when it's all assembled. This is, is as yet height not determined. Uh, the first thing to do is to get the horizontal displacement fixed, get the pulleys lined up and then mark the box section for the two holes to be drilled and tapped. Right? And then uh, onward. But for today that's it. It's going up for five o'clock and that means home time. But basically, we've advanced to tech level. There she is. Right. I'll see you all tomorrow for more fun and games. A whole week in the workshop. Bliss. Bye now. Now you might know that the piece of metal that is the perfect size so what I want next is the scabbiest bit of metal in the shop. But there you go. I'll make some of it. Wednesday. And we're on with making the two supports that uh, bolt to the T-slot in the back of the uh, leg. Good old Rapido. I think I've put too much oil in the damp every time I lift it up it squirts out the top. Perhaps I'm just lifting it too fast. Who knows? There she goes. Are you going to cut off or not? No, it's not. Sounds like there might be a tooth off the blade. There she goes. Right, that's those two in place. We need to measure up now and get a, a, a length of box section that we need with this in the vertical position. So we'll do that and cut some box section. Then, of course, I've got to do rust it on top. Never mind. Onward. My creativity has come to a temporary halt. My beautiful uh, Back and Decker KG11 angle grinder has uh, quit. It needs new bushes shortly, but at the moment they're okay, so I've got some queued up on the, uh, I may need them now. No, I think they'll, they'll, there's a little bit of pressure on the springs, yeah there is. Uh, but the switch had quit, full of muck as usual, so I've had to strip this down and rebuild it. Uh, it's a Black Decker KG11, but this tool is also sold under all sorts of different labels. Unfortunately, it has this strange plug that goes onto the bottom of the switch, which is one piece with the cable. So that, of course, had quit. So I've had to strip that down and uh, and and fill it with uh, hot glue after I'd repaired it. But that's okay. It's just the switch was full of muck. So I'll put it back together, and I think it's going to work. There we are, folks. 
two weldments made up out of scrap. Let's get on with it. And there it is folks. All assembled, bolted in, levelled up and ready for tacking up. So I'm going to get the welder, I'm going to move that table and get the welder out, put it on its extension lead and uh, and just tack this up on the lathe before I take it off and weld it. We're st I'm still not sure that we're actually in the right position along here but obviously uh, it's not fixed at the bottom and we can slide that left to right. Uh, yeah, that's going good isn't it? It's going good. The next thing to do after we've done this is to offer up the uh, the counter shaft. I explained, I believe I explained before that one of the considerations is the angle of the belt. We have to miss the uh, this, this shaft which is the back gear shaft. The belt I'll be using will be probably slightly thinner than this. I'm pretty sure that this is a, a a piece of belt that's been cut off a much thicker, much wider belt, and so it's it's thicker. But you see, we can go, we can go back a fair amount, but we're still going to be somewhere. We're still going to be somewhere like that. So if we have a longer belt, we can come up to here, or I can put a frame on here, which the counter shaft is on, which pivots like that, so it'll swing out that way and have perhaps a spring at the top of it to keep it taut and also perhaps a lever to take the tension off it to change the belts. So it's beginning to come together in my head. Whether it will come together in the same way in practice is anybody's guess. Right, it's cup of tea time. And there she is folks, all welded up, and when I say welded, I mean that in the loosest sense of the term, but it's stuck. It may not be pretty, but it's strong. It gets prettier, I don't get enough practice at welding, right? I do little bits here and there, uh, and I'm very good at filling holes in, but uh, it'll grind up. Grinders and paint make me the welder I am. I've advanced the tech level with the Rapido. I could never get it to cut at 45 degrees. And when my mate from Rotherham brought, brought me the spare uh, cylinder, he also brought me another jaw. And when I check this jaw out, it's slightly different. It's got a longer slot in it and it's got two marks, right? And using that, I've managed to get 45 degrees. So I can do these box sections with 45 degree corners and weld them into a little square because my next move is to make a little square a box section that that will bolt onto 9 inches by about 12 inches and there'll be a piece across there which will have another piece behind it which will fit in between here and will have a pivot through there so that from the top it hinges downwards like that which means I can have a spring to keep tension on the belt I can have a lever to lever it forwards against the spring to slacken the belt to change it. And I think that's going to do it. That's what I'm going to do anyway. 
I shall tack it, I'll tack it up as usual and try it and see if it works. But that's my next move. And of course if I can cut the corners at 45 degrees, uh, it saves doing weldings and closings, uh, closing plates. So I shall now advance and see if it works. Bye now. The last piece. A 45 degree cut and they really are they really are spot on. And this is uh, a really surging step forward with the rapid because I've struggled in the past to cut 45 degrees and I just came to the conclusion it just wouldn't do it. And it will with the right join. There you go. And there it is folks. It needs a bit of fettling at the corners. There's, there's one or two when you're measuring with the, uh, that set square, that, that uh, whatever it's called thing there. Uh, they're not quite, they're not quite 45, but a little, there's very little fettling to do, just a bit of filing off to get them to fit up. I think the thing to do is to, uh, is to uh, just clamp them up and check them and then just fire a little bit off them but they're a very good fit I can't complain I've, that's far better than I've ever got it before I might have to fettle the saw a little bit but a great advancement right well that's Wednesday done folks time has beaten me again I'm going to have a quick tidy up and call it a day so I'll see you all tomorrow for Thursday's fun and games bye now Morning folks, Thursday, and I've had a bit of a tidy up. We were getting a bit smock raveled with bits of steel and stuff all over the place. So I've sorted all this out, put the welder back, and next job is this. Now, whilst this fits, these angles are not exact. And when I look at it, when I look at the way it's cut, it's almost as though the box section has been slightly like that in the vise because it's, it's the angle's wrong there and the angle's wrong there. Not by very much. I'm going to fettle them up now and I'm going to take them outside first, de-rust them, and then I'll, I'll fettle them up uh, and get them fitting and then we'll weld it up. But it's not out by much, but I can see that... Uh, when I set it up, I should have used this really, I should have used this combination square because uh, it's more accurate than that little protector. But I'm going to have to fettle the vise on the, on the Rapido just so that it cuts accurately to 45. As I say, they're not far out, but when you try and put them together in a square, any sort of, any sort of error is magnified. Anyway, onward. De-rusted, fettled up, off we go. Here we are folks. The final internal welds. I improved the fit up a bit, but to be honest it was uh, it was quite a long way it was quite a long way out. The saw seems to be cut into the box section at an angle, as I showed you, and I'm going to have to fettle that, that vise. But, uh, the fit up's good enough, and I've got them, uh, I've got the, I'll put a square in all the corners and got them square, so here we go for the final welds. As you can see, the hydraulic platform makes an excellent welding table. Because it's, you can put it at whatever height you want, saves you back.
I've also made an incredible improvement in my welding skills by dint of fitting a new contact tip. It makes a huge difference when you're working with a knackered contact tip. And the final front here. Here we go. That's a bit springy. That's better. Okay, we have a square block. It's late, can folks. I'm just facing the ends off this shaft because it's a right mess. <laughs> Looks like someone's been beaten with a big toe on me or something.
with a soft centre. Let's just uh, put a bevel on it. Just check the edge off. That is not nice at all. Is that too dragging? That's better. A decent shaft end. I think that's chipped up too. Never mind, it's done the job. There we are folks, a shaft that doesn't look like its ends have been chewed out by a troll. And the now cooled down box section. So I'll just show you what my next thoughts are, I'll bring you back. Right, this is our swinging frame, bolt, 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 there is some adjustment on, on these bolts to ena enable us to get it square, which I mean obviously I'll measure it square first, but also we may need slight adjustment to make the belts run perfectly true. Uh, the pulleys, pulleys seem very good, very true, but they are... I think they are genuine Holbrook ones, so there you go. Uh, pivot on here. Two brackets, piece of tube that fits in between the box sections. Room at either end for a bit of a shim, uh, so we can move it that way if necessary. And uh, it needs to step out a little bit so that it can tilt forward. So we need a, a slightly long pivot on there so that it can tilt forward. So that's the next thing to suss out. I'm on with it, but first I'm going to have a cup of tea. There we are folks, three brackets cut out and a hole drilled through all three. I should have filmed this. It was like riding a bucking bronco. <laughs> this is a set of this is a set of blacksmith drills that I bought years ago from the usual suspects, made in the usual suspect place. And some of them are bent. Not not massively bent, but they just run out of line. And uh, and there you go. But it's drilled the bloody hole, so we can't really complain. Uh, I could have done it. I could have done it on the milling machine, but I don't have a chuck. I want a chuck with a uh, International 30 Arbor on it, with uh, with a drawbar, because I'm not I'm not happy using a chuck that just goes. I've got a Morse taper adapter, and I could put a Morse taper adapter in but I'd, and, and put an ordinary lathe chuck in but I wouldn't do it without a drawbar because it would just bloody any wobbling like this and it would fall out but uh, perhaps I should have done it on the mill it was certainly interesting hanging onto the vice and leaping up and down for grim death there you go I've done it right let's get it out and see if it fits and we're through so there we go folks the idea is that they will weld onto there, like that, one there, one there, one in the middle. They will be welded to this tube and through the centre of this tube will run a pivot which will pivot through the, uh, through the box here. I'm going to have to put some tubes inside there but that's no big deal because I can make them stick out a little bit and weld around them on the outside so that's no big deal uh, so I think that's uh, I think that's going to work but once again it's the witching hour time I was gone so I'll see you all tomorrow tomorrow there's a mate of mine coming around uh, a guy called Richard Teal, who is one of the people who is responsible for getting me into machine tools. Two people got me into this. The first one was my metalwork teacher. 
at Driffield School, Mr. Jim Wrigley, so cleverly called Spearmint by all the kids. He was brilliant. He got me into metalwork. And then Richard Teal moved to Langtoft and with him came his engineering company, his dad's engineering company, TC Engineering, moved in from Leeds. And uh, I went across very often because he was a mate of mine, he became a mate of mine. And I went across there, it was just a, just literally across the, uh, across the green there. And uh, they had machine tools. They had amazing machine tools. They had a Society Genevoise jig borer, which was like such an amazing piece of kit. Uh, and I just, I just fell in love with machine tools. I can't help it. It's the way my mother put me at on. See you all tomorrow. Bye now. Morning folks, Friday, 11 o'clock. I've been doing some siding up in order to get that drilling machine out from the wall because I've marked off here where the pivot is going to go and I need to drill preferably right through from one side to the other. Luckily I have the equipment to do it but unfortunately the only bloody drill I've got that's the right size I've also got this one which could enlarge, which could enlarge it. But the only drill I've got, the right size for the tube, appears to be that one from that uh, set of blacksmith drills. That set of very dubious blacksmith drills. So I'm going to take it out as far as I can with most tapers, and then I shall use a blacksmith drill or even a file to get it to size. But that's it for now. So I'm just rigging up, waiting for Richard to come, because when Richard comes, I should take his advice on how to do it. Uh, he'll be here in an hour or so, but I'm just getting set up. See if I can get that upright taken off there and uh, inveigled under this drilling machine. <laughs> it's sketchy stuff, folks. Bye now. Sketchy setups are us. But... Believe it or not, it's old square and level and flat. So, I think that'll do it. And we've hit the mark. So, there's nothing left to do but drill it. But we're going too slow at the moment, so I need to speed her up. Let's go for it. Here we go, folks. Never mind, I'll bring you back when I'm set up again. Off we go. but it's done the job so now we have to go through and see if we're anything like square at the other side so I'm going to break all this down bring the table up and put it all back together again what a pain but we're getting there well folks that's rather pleasing it's dropped straight through and it's dropped straight onto the centre of the cross for the second hole and that's where I marked it so that may not be accurate but it, it bloody looks like it is it's not critical where the pivot goes right but it has to go somewhere and the only way I can really find out is to just 
get one in there and then uh, I can alter it as I weld the uh, the struts onto the uh, pivoting square if you see what I mean right let's set up for the second drilling That's number three drilled. Forgot to turn the camera on, sorry about that folks. I did actually consider... I did actually consider, he said, setting it up on the milling machine and I broke the milling machine down and tried everything I've got but I haven't got enough fresh air. Uh, I've only got about eight inches of fresh air with the shortest drilling setup I can put in. Uh, I can't put a milling cutter in uh, and anyway I couldn't have got down full depth so it wasn't going to work that way never mind but I think we've just about got it so another shift another breakdown and set up again and uh, we'll have a hole all the way through and of course once we've got a hole the way, all the way through we can enlarge it uh, on other drilling machines or on this one with a, with a shorter setup. Okay, off we go. Oh, I am going to, uh, I'm going to weld a tube into these. This is going to have a tube weld in it as well because it is a pivot point, so uh, it will be reinforced in my usual belt, braces, and sky hooks fashion. Right, I've got it lined up folks, I'm going loose for the last one, I'm not going to clamp it down. There we go. There we go. We're through. Thank God for that. Well that was a nasty experience but now it's over and I forgot to film it. <laughs> I found out was I've, I've put these up against the gauge and they're all over the place. The, the angle's wrong, the chisel point is too wide uh, so I could split the points I suppose that might make a difference. But basically they're, they're, they're really badly ground. They're, uh, the cutting edges are not of equal length and therefore it's trying to cut to one side. But having said that, job's done. So let's. Uh, I've drilled it one size under size, so I can file it to perfect it if I need to. But to be honest, I think it'll be okay. Let's get it on the bench and have a look. Looking good, folks. If I can hold the camera still. Looking good. So rather than file the holes out, I'm just taking a tiny skin off the pipe. And I mean a tiny skin. This is just a very fine cut to get it even up. Because as you might guess, it's not running perfectly central. So this is cutting on one half of the pipe. I don't know what this is, it's not watertight. It's, it's certainly structural pipe of some sort. Yes, it's in, it's in cushion on one side, but it might not be far off. It might not be far off. Eight, four, two. Right, let's take ten cow off. Let's take ten cow off. One drawback of this blade is these tiny blades look quite difficult to see. It's ten five. Right, let's see how we go there. It's a 
right back to finish, folks, because it's doing the job. See what that measures now. Eight three three. I'll just go and check the hole. It was eight two three. And that's eight three two. So let's take off. Ten off. So let's take five off and see how we go. See how we go. go folks I think we can call that a resounding success I'm going to weld these very close to there just a little tiny bit of projection so that they're uh, so that I've got the maximum space between here I like it it's going good Richard's not coming He's just uh, he's just texted me now and he said he's been stuck in a traffic jam for over an hour. There's an accident and uh, there's no easy way around it. So he's turned around and gone home again. Never mind, another day. I think I've found most of the problem with this drill. That pulley has got that huge bolt in it which puts it out of balance. But I think it's also loose on the shaft. Just listen to this. And the thing is, it makes exactly the same noise if you take the belt off. And look at the look at the pulley moving. That motor plate's far too weak as well. Look at the motor plate bending. Yeah, this is this is this is doo doo, isn't it? This needs this needs work. This needs work. But it's done the job. I mean, you know, it's done the job. But uh, it's got also, I mean, this, 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 when you slacken the belts off, this drops down and this moves up and down as well. So 
there's something wrong with that pulley pivot and look at the black dust that's belt dust needs work it'll get it oh and then there's this of course but it's done the job right onward well folks once again time has beaten me I've been working like man I've got that far I've got that welded up onto its pivot and that swings very well from there and will swing right down to 90 degrees so I can remove a lot of these I can curve those off there right and uh, that'll neaten that up uh, that as I say that'll swing right down to 90 degrees which is a lot further than I need it to uh, I wasn't quite sure whether it would swing away from the frame but it does do so there you go so it's been a big week it's been a busy week I've been here five days which has been fantastic thank you all for watching thank you to all the new subscribers welcome aboard to everybody it is really gratifying to find that some of the people I've been subscribed to for quite a long time are now subscribed to me right so it's good it's good that we get ideas and bounce things off each other etc etc so give me a like give me a watch send me a comment if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe and I'll see you all next week and we'll get this finished bye now <laughs>